Welcome back to the Genus Brewing Channel. We've got something fun for you today. We were set to present. So Craft Brew reached out to us and said that they wanted us to test out a catalyst fermentation system, um, which comes with a personalized letter. That's kind of cool. That and is pretty nifty. When they reached out to us, we said, okay, that sounds great because, uh, because we have a couple projects coming up that will require us to grow yeast, and we think this might be the perfect way to do it. So what we're gonna do today is go ahead and get this open, show you what's inside, and then uh, try to grow some yeast and uh, let you know how it goes. All right, let's see what's in the box. By the way, it's not what you might think it is. It's so we've got tubing. I'm guessing that's going to be for a blow off or transfer. Probably transfer. Standard vinyl tubing, nothing special. Stopper. Standard vinyl stopper, nothing special. Some screws and uh, hex nut thing. Uh, these are for your adjuncts uh, when you brew. We've got a thing that the catalyst is going to sit in. Some legs. The, the magic unit. bits. Unit itself. We've got it? a telescope. The base with a mason jar, a screw and mason jar. And that's the lid. And that is the rest of the box. So let's get this uh, set up real quick and then we'll, you know, go over some of the cool features of it that sets it apart from uh, all those other fermenters on the market. Yeah. We've got the thing where the thing is held, the legs, and the I think those go together somehow. You don't know what you're doing, do you? So while Peter's grabbing the Brewcraft order real quick, let me go over this valve with you. This is actually really interesting. So this is a true butterfly valve with positive detents. That's really nice. Um, and if you look in there, you can see it opens as a big flap. So this actually is really, really good for allowing uh, yeast sediment to drop through very easily um, without any fuss. One of the downsides to a lot of other conical based fermenters out there on the homebrew scale is that for the most part they just have little one inch ball valves on them and those are really prone to uh, getting plugged up with yeast especially if you have something like a lager strain that's going to want to cake really really densely um, for you so the fact that they kind of went with the large pushing three inch valve actually on here um, really says something about them uh, making a product that's designed uh, to be able to easily dump yeast um, as well as harvest yeast. Um, with that said, on that harvest note, uh, this is cool because it fits a standard mason jar. Um, beauty th beautiful thing about a mason jar is that you can run these through your sanitation cycle on your dishwasher. They're sanitary, they're ready to go. Uh, you can plug them right into here um, and you're all set. And then also, once you get yeast harvested in one of these, you can actually cap it back up throw it in your fridge and reuse it very easily for your next batch of beer. Just like that, we're all assembled. Only took us maybe two minutes. A handful of screws on the base that's gonna hold it and that was pretty much it. Um, now that we've got this fully assembled, I already talked about the benefits of the butterfly valve and the jar on the bottom. Um, but what else are we seeing now? We got, uh, we got a lid that's got some super, super tight sealing clasp on it. Always good if you want a good close fermentation. Um, also, really easy to read volume markers. Which is really nice because not only can you see your beer, but you can see how much you're going, uh, that is going in there, including how much you're gonna lose when you do a trub dump or when you do a yeast dump or whatever. Yep. Um, and then something else actually I really am excited to mention about this is that uh, this is not made out of PET, which is something I found out over the phone uh, with the company that makes this. This is actually a, a special type of plastic and it is rated to, I believe, 250 degrees, so. Which is hotter than water. Hotter than water, yes. So, so you can put uh, boiling water in here if you do want to heat sanitize this. Um, it's designed so it won't be leaching any type of PVCs or any, any nasties that can affect your beer, which is really cool. Which is good because we like to kill things with fire. Kill them with fire. Not um, actual fire, yeah. but hot water. Let's talk about price point here. So this guy does come in um, a little bit on the high side compared okay. to its competitors. Um, it's right around a two burger. Yeah, it's right around $200. Um, so it is, it is spendy, um, but really what you're paying for there with that higher price point is going to be the fact that um, you can put this under a lot of heat, um, but and also um, the simplicity of the system utilizing mason jars which like I mentioned before you probably already have laying around your house and being able to harvest lots and lots of yeast and store it in a nice 
closed sanitary method. And there's nothing super special about mason jars in particular, but it is a very universal threading. Uh, yeah. So you can fit all sorts of sides of mason jars as long as they are labeled wide mouth mason jars. And uh, it's just for whatever reason what homebrewers started using to keep their yeast a long time ago and ever since the industry has stuck with it. Yeah, what we're going to try to use this for is we're going to actually try to grow up some yeast. We have some yeast that are a little bit on the old side, maybe pale and sickly by now. And we want to see if we can turn them into live active yeast that we can use for one of our bigger batches. Let's do that right now. All right, so now that we've told you a little bit about the catalyst fermentation system, let's just give you a rundown of how we're going to use it to build up some awesome yeasty beasties. Logan, what we got going on? Uh, so first off, uh, we got our water. It's kind of important, you know, for doing anything it dissolves stuff. related. Um, so I've got my mashing boil. I have two gallons heating up. Uh, looks like I'm just about up to a boil. Um, next step, uh, we got some dry malt extract. Uh, five pounds of it, because we're going to be making about a five gallon volume. A uh, simple rule of thumb is actually one pound per gallon on large starters. It gets you OG right around 1040, maybe a touch over. A little bit over, yeah. And, uh, and then I got a little bit of hops, too. I'm just not going to add all these, but uh, just maybe like a quarter ounce or something just to keep that media selective, make sure no bugs are going to get in there. And uh, lastly, I have my yeast, uh, which I'm going to be using some old packs manufactured back in March. It's now the beginning of July. Um, no, beginning of August. It's now the beginning of August, yeah. It's now the second. <laughs> it's the Independence Day. Uh, so. Uh, so these guys are old packs, um, so they should still have some viability in them. Um, with that said, there's something that I don't want to sell to a customer anymore. So these are going to be perfect uh, to build up in this system. And a couple things that we're going to use that are special to building up yeast, especially yeast that might need a little extra help. Uh, we got our uh, oxygen bottle and diffusion stone here too. We're actually really going to want to give this some good aeration or oxygenation before we try to build up yeast in it. Um, and then one more important thing to note is that although the catalyst fermentation system, uh, that plastic can handle hot temperatures, glass cannot. And so I've got the butterfly valve closed and I'm going to sanitize this uh, separately. So I've got a bucket of sani down there for both my glass and for my oxygen wand. Well let's uh, go ahead and get some malt extract in here, boil it up for just a few minutes, make sure it's nice and sanitary, and then uh, transfer it into our fermenter. Um, after that we're going to show you a quick trick that uh, we've learned over the years. I'm going to say sorry, there's not very much liquid in there and so we're going to turn that off just for a hot minute, make sure that nothing burns to the bottom. Hey, 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 you're making me go all over the place. That'll probably just take a couple minutes to get this all stirred in. You don't need to see the inside. You've seen that in some other videas. Check out our uh, cheap and fast light lager recipe. That'll have some, some what happens when you stir DME into things. We've got our DME mixed up. It's already hit hot break, meaning the proteins have started to break out, so there's no extra curdly bits swimming around in there. And now we're just recirculating it through our sparge arm. To get it nice and hot and sanitized. And then all we're going to do is we're going to pipe boiling hot to wort into here and then use some ice cold water to chill it out. Ball valve's closed. Always double check that. And pump is now on. It's actually a butterfly valve. Butterfly valve. That's what I said out loud. So everyone heard me. And the nice thing about boiling hot liquid is it is uh, hot enough to sanitize things very, very quickly. So all we got to do is get that full boiling hot liquid, pop the lid on just to make sure that that's nice and sanitary from the steam, and then we'll pour in our cold water and then mix it up with our oxygen wand while we oxygenate. Yeah, this is a nice little dual system. Mash and boil, just pumping it right in. Uh, I'm going to go grab our cold water and uh, then let Logan take over the rest because i got to go get us some money to fund a brewery. Yeah! What? Breweries need money? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we don't know what we're doing. We've got videos and stuff. Alright, so right now I'm still sitting a little bit warm, so we're going to let this guy cool off for about a half hour here, um, then we're going to actually do a little sediment dump and pitch yeast, so I'll get back to you then. Peter's back, and this has been sitting in our cold storage for a few hours. and for exactly one hour. Down to uh, 66 degrees. And uh, so now we are ready to finally oxygenate and pitch our yeast since Peter has already done a true dump, which yeah. I would have really liked to show you. But he didn't. So I'll basically all I did is I sanitized this uh, mason jar, popped it on, and uh, after it's been sitting in basically cold crashing for exactly one hour. And uh, so now I'm just going to pop the butterfly valve closed, and I'm actually going to properly dump this. Right, I'm gonna get out of the way. 
You're much better at screwing than unscrewing. Yeah, yeah. Hold this, I just want to unscrew that part. Yeah, like I thought it makes a little bit of a mess. But you can definitely tell the difference between this and what's above it. So, jump this out real quick and I'll be right back. I guess I'm gonna be mopping the floor tonight. I'm gonna take these yeast, but he's doing that and uh, get them sanitary. Sanitized and back on. Uh, if this was during fermentation of an actual beer, uh, you would definitely want to fill that with argon or something, an, uh, an inert gas that's not oxygen. And argon? It's heavy. You could also just do carbon dioxide. CO2 work. works, argon's heavier. It's better. Okay. Because <laughs> everyone's got an argon tank sitting around their house. <laughs> Get an argon tank. It's what you need. <laughs> just All right. CO2. So by the way, this is what it looks when you do a trub dump. And there's going to be a little bit more coming down in there, but not nearly as much as last time. We got the majority of it on that one, so we're just going to call that a day. So, just a little bit murkier than the top bit. Um, I'm fine with that. A little bit of trub in the yeast is not going to bother me at all. Uh, but yeah, let's get the oxygen tank, which is being sanitized. Pop that off. Dangle, dangle. I'm throwing this in the sanitizer. So, just a mild amount. Um, you don't need a ton of oxygen in there, and at uh, below 70 degrees, it'll dissolve pretty well. So we're gonna do this for about a minute, minute and a half. Um, and the flow rate is on three quarters right now. See all those happy yeasties going in. And we're definitely, uh, this, this isn't as big as we'd probably like. If it was just a little bit bigger, um, it'd be better for our headspace. So for a four gallon starter or for an actual batch of beer where we're not adding four packs and oxygenating the crap out of it, this would be perfect. But for what we're doing, um, It'd be nice to have a little bit more headspace. I'm gonna put this in a place where if it foams over, which it probably will, it will be okay. That's definitely enough oxygen, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. This will be taken off, and we'll check back with you when it's gone. We'll let you know what's uh, what's happening. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> All right. Well, last time we saw you, we were uh, that was what, what were we doing? Uh, we had just uh, dumped our true, pitched some yeast, and uh, let it rip. So it's been more than a week now, actually, because I went out of town. And you can probably see a little Krausen line in here. It did not blow off, I think. It did not blow off. No, it did not blow off. So that's actually pretty impressive. And what it looks like happened since then is we've got a lot of really healthy yeast cells down below. You can actually see the separation, which we might get you a close-up of in the near future. Beautiful uh, yeast. Yeah. Um, just a little bit of like that trub that we don't want at the bottom and then a lot of thick, yummy yeast. Yep. I'm actually really impressed with the uh, volume. So this didn't just fill this jar, but it actually goes up into the cone a little bit too. So that is a remarkable amount of yeast uh, for a relatively small starter. This is probably enough to pitch in at least a two barrel, if not maybe a three barrel batch of beer. And that, my friends, is why you use kabubbles. Yeah. Uh, now we're gonna take that yeast off and put a lid on it. So what I have here, I've got a fresh lid and a ring, some sanitizer, you probably can't see because it's out of frame. Um, yeah, one thing do note, to note on the storage side of things is that this is basically sitting in its own uh, friends, friends, not <laughs> poo. I don't know. Um, so, so yeah. So you don't want to store this for too long. Maybe a couple, three weeks at the most is all I would do before I try to get it pitched and get it regroused again. The, honestly, the faster the better. Uh, the ideal situation is you have a use for this right when you're done growing these. We've already let it sit longer than I personally like. And if you want to learn more about that, you can check out our video where we did imperial yeast. Mitts, that thing. All right, it's a good thing we don't ever get interrupted here. So uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna pull this off. It's probably gonna make a little mess. So I got some some towels, you know, because every time I work with Peter, he makes a little mess. Yep, and that's why I'm just gonna give this a nice little hand job after I close the valve. This direction. Quick. So satisfying. That's how you know it's done. I think. All right, Peter's gonna gently unscrew it by holding. That and the, the thing that can also get unscrewed, so you don't want to unscrew the whole bottom bit. Yeah, no, you're tightening it. Think upside down, you're backwards. Yeah. All right, we're making progress. That doesn't sound right. All right, Pete's gonna dribble a little bit. I have my nice sanitized lid and ring for this jar. There's probably gonna be a Big old yeast goober that comes out. Yup. Just right. what I thought. Pop it on. Just going for it. Yeah, we're just gonna go for it. Let it drain. Nope. All the way. That yep. A lot of yeast. And that is healthy yeast too. That color and consistency is exactly what you want. 
This is full to the brim, which is going to be better for us. There's less chance for oxygen and contaminations. Boom, and just like that. Now I'm going to take this whole thing and just give it a little bath. I mean, I would have probably just washed that off in a sink, but that's too far away. <laughs> so much yeast. So much healthy yeah. yeast. Um, so we're going to actually plan on using this for another batch of beer because we do still have some yeast in the bottom of the cone. So what I recommend is if you do plan on harvesting the yeast and you're going to take this off and use it again, um, definitely make sure you get up underneath there, spray it down really well with some star sand, and you're good to go. All right, so we've got yucky slurry bits and then a bunch of really healthy, yummy yeast. And a nice sanitized jar. Like we said, we don't want to be holding onto this for too long, so we're going to try to get it into a bigger batch sooner rather than later. But that's pretty much how you make a big old yeast starter using the catalyst fermentation system. It's a beautiful thing. Actually, that worked slicker than I even thought it would with way more yeast than I thought. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think if you are in the sort of business of where you want to save some yeast and reuse it, say you're brewing bigger batches, say you're out in a place where you don't have super fresh, awesome yeast readily available at all the time, local homebrew shop like we do here. Yeah. Um, uh, this would actually be a great, great way to go about that. And as far as using it just for your standard homebrew fermenter, it still works pretty slick. I don't think it's too much different than any yeah. other fermenter. It kind of six in one, half dozen the other. Uh, but we really do like this uh, functionality for growing some some giant batch yeast for ourselves. Thanks for watching. Keep on stuff. And and next time we'll do th some things as well. <laughs> Bye. Beetle the beer. Beetle the beer. Maybe maybe don't do this with beer in it, <laughs> but without beer. Ba da ba ba da ba ba ba. Da 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 da.